So you actually made the news uh, in early July when the NCAA announced that your rankings, the T rank, are, are going to be included on the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee's team sheets, which helps help them, um, you know, guides them, I guess, in the selection process uh, for the NCAA tournament. I, I mean, obviously, you've got to be proud of, of what you built with the site and the analytics that you've been able to deliver to the fans. I, mean, I, I guess... How did it make you feel when you when you heard that the NCAA wanted to utilize these rankings and kind of what went into that process for uh, for them to to add that to the team sheets? Sure, yeah, obviously it's cool, um, and yeah, I'm proud. I guess it's also a little bit scary. Um, you know, one of the things about my site is you know it's a free site, um, so I feel that the that sets expectations pretty low as far as what kind of service I have to deliver. <laughs> Um, and if I get a box score wrong, you know, it's one out of 5,000 box scores, um, not such a big deal. So it puts a little bit more pressure on me to uh, be accurate about things. And obviously I, I should do that anyhow, but, um, so there's that aspect of it. Um, but overall, obviously it's, it's kind of an honor. Um, I think the, uh, the way it went down is Jeff Sagarin, who had been on the um, team sheets for years before this, um, I guess he retired last year, um, sort of without warning to the NCAA at least. Um, so they just were, there was just kind of a column missing on their team sheets. And I think that my rankings were probably the most used among committee members, um, perhaps to replace that. So they just, uh, reached out to me and asked me if I'd be willing to do it. And I said, sure. Um, although I did the other, honestly, kind of bigger news in my view um, on that day was that they're also adding another rating on sort of this, the resume side, um, a, a wins above bubble or WAB or WAB, however you want to pronounce it, um, resume type rating that's going to be based off the net, which is something I've been advocating for for years. Um, and I think that, that it's really uh, one of the best ways to um, evaluate a team's record, basically, um, for purposes of selection in particular, and also for seeding, in my opinion. So, and I, you know, when they reached out and asked me about adding my ratings, I, I kind of advocated for adding WAB, and it, it, well, I don't think I had any sway because it sounded like they were already um, had already decided, they'd already kind of tested it and. Um, we're moving towards that anyway, but so whatever, um, you know, ambivalence I have towards this um, being part of the official thing, I think was offset by, yeah, that was kind of a, a victory for me, <laughs> even though it's not directly related to my site. For those in our audience that might be unfamiliar with Winds Above Bubble, and not to dive too deep into the weeds with a, a technical explanation, but what exactly is that measuring and why it was it important for you to advocate to get that on the on the on the uh, team sheet so basically wins above bubble is just one number that um, corresponds to um, how good your record is and the way it's calculated is you you can calculate using any um, power rating system like Ken Palm or mine or the net um, how many wins a bubble quality team would have against your schedule so let's say you're Indiana and you've played a really difficult schedule, including all the Big Ten games, uh, 31 games. You can say, okay, a bubble team would have gone 19 and uh, 12 against that against that schedule, and Indiana went 21 and 10. So they're they're plus two in wins above bubble. They've won two more games than a bubble team would be expected to. And then you look at maybe um, Davidson or something, a good team that plays in a lesser conference. You can say, well, a bubble team against that uh, rec against that schedule would be twenty six and five, and Davidson's twenty seven and four, so they're only plus one wob. So still, still a bubble bubble quality theoretically, but not as good as Indiana in this hypothetical. And obviously, you know, you can reverse it. So it's the reason I advocate for it is because it's kind of the the fairest and most um, theoretically sound way to evaluate uh, the diversity of, of, of schedules and records that we get in college basketball, which is one of the great things about college basketball. So many teams, so many different schedules, but it's also the biggest issue um, for the selection committee is how do you, how do you evaluate 
the that diversity and this is you know it's theoretically sound doesn't mean it's always 100 correct but it's the best way i think to do it 